Welcome back to Auto Review. My name is Patrick, and today I'm presenting you the new Corsa OPC. The Corsa OPC is the most powerful Corsa from all of them, producing 207 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, maximum torque of 245 Newton meters between 1,900 and 5,800 RPM, with the overboost function that pushes it to 280 Newton meters for a little period of time, 0 to 100 in 6.8 seconds, top speed 230 kilometers an hour. Price for this one starting in Switzerland at 28,600 Swiss francs. And fuel consumption I had was between 6.7 on the highway, taking it very, very slow, up to around 9.0 to 9.2 with the city mixed and having a little fun in it. So let me show you as usual, first row, second row, boot space, and then we drive. Enjoy. Okay, so the Corsa OPC from inside and you won't see much difference to the normal Corsas if you just look at the dashboard. Obviously, we have leather wrapped sports steering wheel with um, the buttons left for cruise control and speed limiter, right for the radio and the telephone. You see a little bit different instrument cluster, it's written OPC in it. And we have the touchscreen uh, system here, however, this one is without navigation. But the main difference is when you look at the seats, this beautiful super comfortable, nice, like grabbing you in the corner recaro seats. And they are just amazing. They're super comfortable, really very, very comfortable. Very nice to sit. The only thing is they have this little thing in the middle here, which always your head has to go left or right. So it's kind of difficult to keep it in the center position, but that's just a little thing. We have from the left to right, um, the buttons for the electric mirrors electric windows, obviously in the front only, huge door pockets. As you can see, we have big bottle fitting in here, 1.5 liters. Then steering wheel, I mentioned already. On the left, we have the automatic lights. Uh, we have big Xenon, by the way, in the OPC. Then the steering wheel, you can obviously adjust in all directions. Instrument cluster, RPM on the left, speedo on the right, with a little multimedia information system in the middle uh, on fuel consumption range and so on. Then on top, we have just the vents for the air condition. This one has the manual air condition. You can get an automatic one as well, plus the touchscreen I mentioned already. Uh, however, without navigation. ESP on and off, parking sensors, lock and open the doors. And on the bottom, we have a 12 volt power socket, one USB port, one AUX in, plus a very smart kind of rubberized cup holder. Uh, here, a little pocket below the handbrake, plus two more cup holders in the middle. Glove box is decent size, actually fits quite a lot of stuff, plus the airbag uh, deactivation for the passenger. We have one mirror on the driver's side, however, no mirror on the passenger side. So this car is not made for someone who drives with his wife or girlfriend on the passenger side. They will not have the time or the patience to do the makeup while it's driving, because this car is made for driving. Okay, and then obviously automatic mirror that dims in the evening. That's it, let's hop on the second row and we continue over there. All right, so the Corsa from behind. And here continues the same, we have the leather on the outside plus the material on the inside. Two isofix on the seats, obviously. This one is made for five people. As you see, we have three backrests, three three-point seat belts. Uh, Space-wise, the seat in front is adjusted to me. Um, obviously, I would have still space a bit going forward, but 
like this I'm not able to sit this way it's fine and it's not bad I have to say we have some pockets next to the seats for cups or bottles and some small items plus one speaker and from the roof line as well you can see I can sit straight no problem whatsoever despite maybe from outside it looks like you're not gonna have much space because of the roof line it's actually very spacious and I can only recommend it so let's check the boot all right so the course OPC from the back and uh, we actually haven't looked into design what's the difference between the OPC and the normal Corsas obviously we have a nice wing which makes the car look much better we have design wise the triangle window with a little extension I would say however this one here is plastic it just breaks the C pillar a little bit but it's still a little bit difficult to see because you have quite a massive C pillar uh, lights I like red and white everyone who watches my videos knows I love red and white lights then we have the side skirts the optional 18 inch alloys which look really good I really like them bumper which is a little bit lower the double exhaust left and right and the silver blue OPC logo on the right side to open the boot you just open behind the Opel logo and then it opens and let me tell you this much um, we have fitted all our week shopping uh, stuff in here so there's a lot of space here you don't have to worry about uh, actually not having enough of space for two people okay so that's it let's close it up and finally let's go and drive and now you're gonna see that's gonna be a bit bumpy obviously the road is a little bit bumpy thing is the car is actually firm but it's not uncomfortable firm it's I love it honestly I really like it but I think we wait until we're just down there because it's not nice to see for you because it's really shaking quite a little okay so here we go so um, one thing that I forgot to mention is that I actually have tested the previous Corsa OPC as well so if you want to check out the video just head over to the eye on the top right corner and that one actually I have tested in Dubai and Abu Dhabi Al Ain so quite an interesting thing and another fact when comparing both models together is that OPC all the performance cars from Opel so the OPC models are tested 10,000 kilometers on the Nürburgring Nordschleife which uh, I haven't known before and only if they pass this test without any fault then they go into production so that's one thing second thing old OPC Corsa versus this OPC Corsa was 13 seconds slower other way around this one is 13 seconds faster on the Nürburgring compared to the previous model which is a lot obviously we have now a little bit more horsepower the old one uh, had 192 this one has 207 well one thing that I really liked because I drove the car last three days this is the fourth day I have this car is how nimble it is look at this look at this how how immediately it moves and it doesn't roll the body is not rolling so it doesn't have much body roll it's super easy to drive uh, it has sufficient punch for a hot hatch because this is what it is it's a hot hatch and we're just gonna go a little bit on the highway so you can see how it's gonna accelerate so here we go So 6.8 as I mentioned, 0 to 100. One thing that I didn't like in the old Corsa OPC, as well as the Astra OPC, the old one, was the gearbox. I love manual gearboxes, especially in performance cars or hot hatches or whatever you want to call it. And the problem in the last version or the previous model was that the first and second gear in both Astra and Corsa was kind of not really smooth. It was bit difficult to get the gears in they did fix it in a way 
because they say they reduced the shift travel and shift time by 13% and it is better but it's still not as refined as I would like to have it you know I mean it feels like there is kind of a barrier just before you get the gear in I don't know if it's like supposed to be this way that Opel wanted to have it this way or if it's just something to control the driver to not break the gearbox by you know slamming into the gear slamming in the gears uh, maybe while being on a throttle you know and not clutching properly so something like this I mean there are cars performance cars and hot hatches that just have a little bit nicer shifting but it's not bad and it's much better than the previous model so I want to tell you that much so as I mentioned fuel consumption if you take it super super easy you're gonna get it below 7 I managed 6.7 on a highway run if you have a mix you're gonna go more towards the 9 liters and Opel claims I think 9.9 .9, which I actually was better than that I managed 9.2 and even 9.0 in a mix yeah, on over 200 kilometers now Let's go this way and let us look how fast you can do the rounds here. And it accelerates out of the corners. It's really a lot of fun to drive. It's it's super nimble. Brakes are amazing. Uh, as you've seen in the intro, they are Brembo brakes. Yeah, so you can get the Corsa OPC with an optional OPC performance package, which will add. Uh, 18 inch alloy wheels which we have here the Brembo brakes as well as uh, differential yeah, mechanical differential and all this together makes the car very nice to drive I mean but we're going through a corner and I pretty much have no body roll whatsoever and it's just fun it's super fun let's go left we go to the small roads the steering is nice, it's actually a uh, speed sensitive um, steering, assisted steering, so the faster you go, the harder it actually gets. I mean, not harder, stiffer, I would say, yeah, stiffer. And I really like it, and what I enjoy most is actually the seats. I mean, they're really comfortable, even when driving uh, 30, 40 kilometers without stopping on the highway, they were very comfortable. Always respect the elders, and that's no joke. Yeah. That's serious, I mean that. Okay. Sound. Mm, not bad. Let's say this, not bad. It's kind of a deep... Growling, 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 something like this. It's not too aggressive. And I'm someone, if I drive a car like this, a performance car, I like the car to be loud. It's nice inside, but I think outside is not so much. I mean, I I was able to have it like pop just a little, little uh, when in neutral, and you rev it to like three thousand. You know, it was okay. I mean, it's not bad. You know, don't take me wrong. But comparing it to an Abarth, you know which is the car I'm driving actually, I'm driving on the BART, uh, which obviously is a turbocharged engine, it's a 1.4, so it's small capacity and has less power than this. It's much more enjoyable when it comes to a sound point of view. I mean, it's not bad, right? Okay, let's keep safe distance. Um, you can get some assist systems for the car, which does, this doesn't have. You can get navigation, which this doesn't have. And you can get automatic AC, which this doesn't have. And that's another thing that... You know, there is quite a lot of competition in small hot hatch performance cars out there at the moment. I mean, the Corsa OPC, which we drive here, is... It's not easy to actually decide on a car. Obviously, if you're if you're someone who likes a certain brand, okay. But 
we can have the Fiesta ST, right? We can have the Abarth, which different levels and different engine choices. We can have, well, the other cars are less powerful. Uh, Renault Clio RS. So there are quite a few cars on the market, you know, that give you like this small car, powerful engine thing, which is really cool. Then this car, as it is here with everything on board, would be approximately 36,000 a bit francs, which is quite a lot of money if you think about it. This goes already into the price range of the Ford Focus ST, for example, which then has 250 horsepower, right? So even more than this is already a little bit bigger car. So you really have to, to think what is important for you. I mean, for example, the Clio RS, you can't get it in manual. You can only get it in automatic. This one you can get manual. The Abarth, you can get both automatic and manual. The Fiesta ST is only uh, six speed. Yeah? But then, again, the Abarth, for example, has no sixth gear, has no cruise control, um, has, uh, well, the seats are good, but not as nice as this one. I think this one is number one, just around the same as uh, the Fiesta ST. I prefer this one, actually, from the looks of all, because the Fiesta ST seats, for example, are too thick. Um, but for 36,000, not so sure. So, thank you very much, Autobetchen, who provided this car to me. Yeah, please check the links down below there and head over to find all the information. And I hope you enjoyed this review. I really like driving this car, to be honest, I really like it. The gearbox, yes, there could be a little bit more fine tuning, but it's much better than the previous model, as I mentioned. The punch is good, and again, thanks a lot for watching, subscribe to the channel, share the video, like it, comment below, ask if you have any questions, and other than that, I wish you a great day, great week, great month, and I'll see you next time. Bye!